all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where we'll bring you back to back update and information as to the hot uh in case you have not joined our social media handle kindly go ahead and subscribe to our channel like comment share and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news enter you will be the first we'll collect them the beer friends um have rejected mazi as a fair as he said that one nigeria is the best for Ndibo. Uh, I don't know what propelled him to say that, uh, but somehow uh, uh, these people are, are politicians. These are some of these Igbo elders uh, who should be outspoken uh, for for Ndibo. Uh, they say this man now has come out uh, to say that um, uh, what is best for Igbo is one Nigeria. Uh, that the fight uh, for Biafra is not what uh, Ndibo should be engaging in. Uh, that um, uh, God uh, purposely assigned Ndibo to to Nigeria. Uh, but I think um, Ezefe is forgetting something. That um, uh, Nigeria was not once Nigeria. Uh, it was one eastern, south, uh, eastern protectorate and uh, northern protectorate. And um, he forgot that uh, there was a time the, the Yorubas was there by themselves, even before the, 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 colon before the colonization, that the Yorubas were there by themselves, the Igbos were there by themselves, the Hausas were there by themselves, the Hausa Falanis were also there by themselves before Lord, Lord Dugard came, I think around 1940 or something like that, and um, did what he called amalgamation, uh, that's just to bring the three protectors together that made them to become one Nigeria. Many people protested during that time. If you know the history, uh, you will find out that when the colonial master came, he started calling upon uh, these three uh, regions, uh, these three different people to come together, to come and have a meeting. The, the, the colonial master observed something about Ndibo. What people don't even understand is that before colonialism, Igbo people are already democratic in nature. The Hausa man was practicing what is called a, a monarchy, even though the Igbo man was practicing monarchy, but the Hausa man kind of monarchy was anarchy in nature, authoritarianism. Should I say that the Hausa people were practicing total authoritarianism? Because then it was only the leadership of the man. Once the man called these people as Muslims, they come together they come together with with force and and come and answer the meeting the same thing happened to the yorubas yorubas were a kind of people who are very you know they behave like should i call them they, they are more like servant in nature that once you, they see that you are ahead of them they call but when the the the, the white man came to ndibo he observed something that ndibo themselves has already started practicing democracy even before white man's coming because how things used to happen in Igbo land is that before uh, an Igbo man will do something, they have what is called the Eze is there, or the Obi, or the Igwe, depending on the side of Igbo you are coming from. Some people call Obi, some people call Igwe, some people call Eze. The Eze will deliberate and tell Ndiozo, Ndiozo will deliberate and tell the age, age grade, age grade will deliberate. And now take it back to the kinsman Omo. Now Omo now will deliberate and still call the people that is called the Omo Ada or the Omo Opo that will deliberate on this thing. You cannot leave these people out. That was how Igbo man, the, the Igbo man has already started practicing democracy before now. But it's just that some of these uh, elders of Ndibo does not want to tell Ndibo the truth. Because when the white man came, it was as if the white man brought everything. No, Igbo people had already started practicing democracy. Because how the Igbo man judges matter is that uh, if something is happening in a family, first of all, uh, they will tell the the family, the homeowner, the immediate family. If the immediate family cannot handle it, they take it to the homeowner, which are the kinsmen. If the kinsmen cannot handle this matter, they can also take it to the homeowner to handle. To look into it. If it's the matter is out of the hands of Omada, they take the matter to what is called age grade. If the person has already grown and has entered into age grade, some people are 
They take it to the people, say, look at your, this is your age mate. Talk to him. Look at what is happening. Then if it's a lady, they take it to Umar and say, look at what is happening. Or they take it to Ndi Mundi. That's where the, the, the lady is married to. The group of ladies married in that family. They have their own group. They take it there and discuss it. They have Unyom. Like you have Unyom Umweza. Unyom Umwabara. Unyom Umwezana. Something like that. Was what how... That was how the Igbo man was practicing his own politics then. Then, if the matter is out of hand and the age grade, they will not take this matter to the main town. If the main town cannot discuss this thing, they will not take it to, to Ndins and Ozo. Then, if the matter passes in the Ozo, they take it to the king direct. That's when the king will discuss it. The woman does not do, the woman has started setting his office of democracy more like that the king is the president then now you don't just go to the king and talk anything these sets of people i called if you know Igbo history we discuss this matter if they, if they're not if now they cannot handle it that is when the king will hear it but meanwhile let me take you to what Ezifa is saying let's see the point Ezifa is coming from the Ezifa said the almighty god in heaven has an assignment for Nigeria, and that was why he created Nigeria. The assignment is that Nigeria should grow into a superpower amongst nations and rise the respect and dignity of all blacks on the earth. No country in the world is as blessed as Nigeria. Look at our climate. It is livable. You can stay out for long and you won't be tired of cold or heat. Nigeria has minerals which people, which people that we don't even know are mining. Look at our human resources, many talents from different tribes. Look at the frontiers of technology all over the world. You would see our children making waves by creating novelty all over the place. God did not just give us an assignment. He prepared us to rise, rise the dignity and respect of all blacks. But since independence, what we have done, we were holding on to the coup of 1966. The present generation of people sold off to America is now saying black lives matter. For me, it is a big shame that we can even be saying black lives matter. Which lives should matter if not the, the blacks? Today, it is known that the black man is not inferior in physical prowess, power, gifts, intellectual gifts, or emotions. The black man is not inferior to any human variation in this world. It is a pity and people are losing hope. There is too much poverty in this part of the world. I think we should begin to rethink ourselves. We should go back to the drawing board. Let's start to think about how to make Africa shine. Look at what is happening. The United Nations is there and Russia is killing people in Ukraine. Nobody cares how many people are dying. Africans were so negative even when they were killing Muammar Gaddafi. We didn't know it was meant to mark us not to realize what we have that is an eye opener for all of us we know we have messed up so let's go back to the beginning let's get back to our values and religion somehow the military which ruled nigeria for so many decades after the coup of 1966 actually ruined nigeria we started with all kinds of things that we are not right and they started covering all with ethnicity and religiosity and since then we have been growing in religiosity, ethnicity, and corruption. Even the government, mosque, church, and world itself are corrupt. At independence, we were equal to Malaysia, South Korea, Brazil, etc. But all of those countries that were behind us at independence are now miles in front of us. What should be done is to let the people who have conscience begin to think of a new Nigeria. We have complained enough and should organize and bring our ideas to help the situation. One of the greatest problems we are facing is leadership and how to select leaders has been the main problem. The solution is that the moment the government is play, in place is interested in staying on, staying on, it cannot allow free and fair election. Democracy is said to be the government of the people, by the people and for the people. And by the people means the people choose their leaders. 
Now, do they choose their leaders? I think there should be a revolution, especially in Africa, whereby we will begin to organize Africa as it is one country. We should remove the control of an individual country's electoral process. If the African Union or the Economic Community of West Africa states can set up a fair, well measured and dissected electoral body, and must be seen to be clearly indifference to people's ambition and conduct elections in a clean manner. They are outside the country and do not belong to any political party. They are an external force to conduct, supervise, and do everything about the election in such a way that the government in power and the opposition have no hand in influencing the outcome of the election. In fact, the United Nations should have done that, creating a body of help. If you leave the election to individual countries and their government, you will see failure. The meritocracy used in China is what we should also use, whereby if we as a people vote and our votes count, and the people who choose are in power, we will have no reason to blame anybody. We can deal with them if they mess up and drop them in the next election, or even while they are still in office. We need a revolution, a basic and fundamental change. We have succeeded in surviving without development. I don't know in what area we have succeeded. We are making progress backward, taking giant steps backward. At Independence, my group and I saw Nigeria exploding in economic development and we contributed to it. In the past, people had interest in promoting development unlike today, though there were still a few who believe in the idea, who will go back to the old days and try to absorb the current generation into the ancient values of our people and not into taking drugs or engaging in courtism. We cannot ignore them because they are the leaders of tomorrow. Nigeria has the best opportunity and we want development. We want to make the black man proud. We are the largest black group on earth and we are giving everything we need to shine. So let's choose a way to shine. I really don't want the comment in any way or the current government, but there is now an agreement on restructuring Formerly, some parts of the North were against it because they misunderstood points. They thought that the structuring begins and ends with resource control and that it means that money generated from crude oil will stay with the crude bearing states. Now, the structuring has more to do with growth and development than withholding oil money from other states. We can now use whatever we have to develop every part of Nigeria. The money generated from oil, gold, and others. We go everywhere so that we can stay. Say that if you are a, if you are a producing, you are producing any mineral resources, they are federally controlled. And the owner of the land will be entitled to a certain percentage, while the rest of the proceeds will be shared as agreed, so that every part of the country will take advantage of whatever that is coming out. Uh, my people, when I don't see I see they happen. Uh, this one is coming from Mazi Ezihe. Uh, but I think um, he is missing something. But meanwhile, I'll wind down the curtain here. And if this is actually your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, uh, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, and share. Thank you for listening. God bless you.